So today's topic is frequency, which means there will be so many terrible overused frequency puns that it hurts. Before we get started, don't forget to click the subscribe button and to click the little bell to get notified every time we post a new video. We'll get started with a super meta science reminder of the day. Everything around you is a signal that you can measure and use in some way. So today we're going to be talking about frequency, one of the biggest tools you can use to describe those signals that are happening in the world around us. The definition of frequency is pretty simple. A frequency is the number of times that something, literally anything, happens over a period of time. Think of the word frequent. A higher frequency means something is happening more frequently. If you go to the bathroom three times in a one hour class, that's a frequency and also a sign that your teacher needs to be a little more entertaining. If you jump on a bed 250 times in seven minutes, that's a frequency too. To make things easy, it's most common to use the standard unit, hertz, hence my bad puns, to describe frequency. Hertz are nice because they're defined as one per second. So if I jump on a bed three times in one second, I jumped at three hertz. For now, it's important to remember that frequency describes a repetitive pattern or event, like jumping up and down, turning off and off a light, Tom Brady scoring touchdowns, Sorry, I was raised in Boston, I have an excuse. There are ways to describe events that don't repeat using frequencies, but that's something for a later video. Now that we have the basic concept under our belts, let's make this a little bit more interesting. If frequency is the number of times an event happens per second, or one per second, that means that frequency is the inverse of the number of seconds it takes for something to happen. Therefore, if we take one and divide it by our frequency, we get a measurement called the period. To jump back to my bathroom break example, if you go three times in an hour, that period is 20 minutes, the amount of time between each bathroom break. The period measurement is also super useful. For example, if you jump on a bed or make an LED blink five times per second, which is five hertz, how long is the wait between blinks? The answer is the period of the signal. In this case, one divided by five hertz, which is 0.2 seconds. So all you have to do is remember that frequencies describe repeating patterns and period is the measurement of how long one repetition takes from start to end. Okay, so let's get a little bit mathy for a second here. Rolling up the sleeves for the math. Let's say that a street lamp is flickering at 10 hertz. That means it blinks 10 times each second. One divided by 10 hertz gives us a period of 0.1 seconds. In a slightly harder example, now the lamp blinks on for one second, then off for three seconds. So what's the new frequency of the blinking light? In this case, it's easier to calculate the period first, which is one second on plus three seconds off, giving us four seconds. So if our period is four seconds, all we have to do is divide one by four seconds to get a frequency of 0.25 hertz. Frequency is actually something you've probably seen or heard used to describe a lot of stuff you use every day. For example, if you play video games or bought a new TV recently, you might have cared about the refresh rate of the screen, something like 60 or 144 hertz. This is the number of times that your screen is refreshed with a new image per second. High frequencies make motion look smoother. If you've ever had your hearing tested, you'll know that all sounds are a frequency too. Human ears are sensitive to frequencies between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. When someone has hearing loss, that means that they can't hear certain frequencies anymore. Music is actually made from tons of different frequencies and signal shapes added together in a beautiful symphony of sound. For example, I play the violin and I tune to an A, which is 440 hertz. This is how we're able to make music using bolts of lightning from the Tesla coils. To make you hear an A, all the Tesla coil has to do is shoot 440 lightning bolts per second. Let's play a bit with period and frequency using LEDs and a speaker. I've got an LED here that's blinking with a period of two seconds. If we start turning the period up and down, we can see the blinks get further and closer together. For now, it's easy to count how many blinks are happening over a period of time to estimate our frequency. Once we start turning our period down to the 0.1 second range and smaller though, it gets a lot harder. So let's switch to an output where we can still notice differences in periods and frequencies, a speaker. At one hertz, we only see the cone of the speaker moving at one time per second, making a pop. As we turn up the frequency, we notice that the pops become closer together, making sounds that are more and more like music notes. Higher frequencies make higher and higher notes, and certain frequencies correspond to certain named notes, like middle C is 261.6 hertz. The last thing we want to mention in this introduction to frequency is the idea of a waveform. We talked a bit about how frequencies describe repeating patterns, and these patterns are called waveforms. Depending on what you're working on for a specific project, though, you'll need different waveforms with different characteristics. We're going to be looking more in depth at different waveforms in the next couple of weeks, 
so stay tuned. But if you want to get ahead, or you just love geometric identities, I don't know, now's a good time to look up what sine and cosine are. Hopefully this was a helpful introduction to frequency. We've got a high frequency of content just like this lined up for the next couple of months with a period of one week. So if you enjoyed this video, you should give us a like and click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Down in the description below, you can find the link to our super awesome merchandise store where you can support our 501c3 nonprofit by buying sweatshirts, socks, and more. Signing off, this is Zyla with Andrew behind the camera.